All right, so we're uh, back again. Um, and so now that we're continuing this little section, so let's talk a little bit about some issues related to uh, internal validity of a study. So when we are talking about internal validity, you know, these are gonna be, you know, issues um, with the uh, content or structure of a study that impact the uh, outcomes. So super important um, impact of outcomes or the analysis of these outcomes, right? So first one that we'll you know kind of think about, and this goes uh, back then, right? Back to our issue of sampling is this issue of you know, selection bias, right? So that basically that there is something different about the subjects or the participants or the agencies that is different from other people that's gonna affect the outcome. So related to uh, sampling then, right? So if we have a very limited number of agencies and there's only a few uh, that are willing to participate or get involved or, you know, do something like that. So there's a limited number of agencies and only a few, um, you know, select or buy into this issue or, you know, decide to participate in a study. So if they decide to do police tactic or if they want to do something with their training uh, that was different or if they, uh, you know, just really wanted to do uh, anything like that, right? So if there's only a few select into a study then, this suggests that there is something different about the agency against those who did not participate in Herit. Sometimes we can measure this, sometimes we know explicitly what it is, other times we not so much, right? So we'll start with like one example, right? So if we started with, let's say we had a study that was interested in limiting domestic violence, right? I'm gonna call it Domvile, right? So you know, maybe you ask around, some agencies are interested, some agencies aren't, you know, maybe you wanna arrest some people, maybe you just wanna issue a citation to some people, maybe you don't wanna do anything different or just leave it strictly to officer discretion, um, you know, or you, or maybe there's some other enhancement to state law, who knows, right, there's something different. If there is like an agency who's willing to participate in this, right, one, they apparently are receptive to, to, to new techniques, right? So, you know, they want to come out and say, oh, wow, that's really great. You know, we really like this. We want to explore something new, tell us something new about, you know, our agency uh, that we, you know, really, that we're really positive about, right? So they're receptive to those kinds of new techniques. Uh, maybe they have an emphasis on it in the organizational structure. Or, you know, if you are, you know, promising money so this promise of money, you know, could be enticing. So if you're, maybe you give people more pay or you get more overtime hours and you have some grant money or something like that hanging around, then that could even get people to uh, be willing to participate. So, you know, whatever the reason is, right, there is something different about those people that, um, those agencies that um, are, is different from someone else, right, from coming in. So because of that, we have to be a little cautious of it and uh, make sure that, you know, there's really like no kind of issues, you know, related to that, right? So the other part that we should also consider, right, is that uh, police departments, have, are going to be you know subject to history right so this is going to be an external event um, that influences research findings so let's say uh, let, let's give an example here right? So let's say that you were in a study where you were looking at police uh, like morale or self-efficacy, so their ability to do a job and perform it well, right, or self-esteem or whatever, right? And let's say that you had, you know, something going on 
where you were looking at a new program to maybe, let's say, I don't know, maybe it's more therapy for cops. Maybe it is, uh, you know, a diversion to, um, you know, some sort of lifestyle management program or it's a life coaching or it's a new approach in training or new emphasis, whatever, right? Uh, but, you know, the goal is to design to improve the mood, right? The mood of officers around the mood of those participating, um, you know, or, or something like that, right? We'll, we'll just use that as an example. So let's say we have this data, right? So this is called a time series thing. So let's call this, uh, we're gonna call this uh, time. And we'll call this, uh, you know, we'll call it mood, right? The scale doesn't matter. This is just simply for illustration purposes, right? So let's say that we're here and we're tracking, we're tracking and, you know, over time, right? We, we see this big, you know, it gradually is improving. Police morale is pretty light. And then, you know, after a certain period, right, there is just like, shaboom, really low. And it stays low throughout the duration of the study, right? And so if we look at this, right, you know, what do we what do we ultimately see? Well, we see like there's this, you know, really big increase, right? So we saw there's a pattern, and then there's this sharp drop, right, that occurs right here, right? And so why why is there a big jump um, in that, right? You know, why would there be such a huge drop off like that, something like that? So this suggests the presence of an external event. A historical effect, perhaps, um, that really, you know, disrupted studies. What would be an example of something like that, right? Well, you know, you could think if there was changes in leadership, so delta change um, in leadership, so maybe a popular chief left for a new position or perhaps was fired or something like that. Uh, maybe there was an officer working for the department who, you know, I don't know, uh, they ended up shooting someone, this led to protests. Um, so it really killed the mood because protests, because cops felt like they were being attacked by mood and you know work became you know dangerous or something like that. Um, you know, possibly this could be something that the city decided that you know their budget wasn't solvent and they ended up having to lay off officers so stress you know came up or something like that. The point of this, right, is that, you know, when we think about history, we want or we want to find ways that are, you know, things that could directly impact the studies that aren't related to the study itself, right? So it's an external factor. So when we think about, uh, depending on the study, keep in mind it has to be study specific, right? You know, these things do matter um, and they could matter, you know, a lot depending on how strong influence is, especially if they don't recover, right? So... Keep that in mind, right? Um, like in this police morale study, that um, things could uh, things could happen, you know, dramatically that could you know affect it in some way. And there's a lot of different things from a contextual or environmental or uh, you know perspective that could uh, impact your findings, right? So that just be aware of that. So, you know, I'm trying to think about like other things that are going to be really, really kind of like that are specific to policing, right? Because a lot of them apply, but I'm trying to give specific examples here as well. I guess we'll uh, sort of can, uh, can, let's do, oh yeah, we'll do like an instrument change, right? So let's say, for example, um, like sort of instrument change or instrumentality, right? So the way something is measured changes, right? Uh, we'll put a delta for that. Uh, so let's say that is something that is uh, changing, right? So like, so if there is the way that something uh, is measured like that. So if we think about this, like what, what would be an example of something like this could happen? Um, I'll give you an example from Dallas PD um, a few years ago. So I, when I say a few years ago, oh God, I'm talking about like 10 years ago, maybe more. Basically, you know, for the longest time, uh, police department, and that's changing this year, I think. Um, 
departments are weighed by UCR crimes, right? And that is the metric that's used to figure out, like, you know, like how how well the police are doing at their job, right? Are they getting UCR crimes getting uh, coming down, right? And so there are, you know, legal and UCR definitions for a crime, right? And at the time, the mayor and the police department at the time was really interested in, you know, getting crime rates down in the city. Um, you know, that was like a big driving thing. We're going to make our city feel safe. We can't have, um, you know, like any kind of like ongoing issues or something like this. We need, we need this to be addressed, right? So when this ends up happening... Um, is that like if there are these changes, right? There's, you know, one way you can go about this, right? Is to, uh, pathway one is to create a new strategy or deploy officers in, new, uh, in a new way or something like that, right? Where you're uh, going to reduce crime in, so, in some way, right? So you could test it, you could see how effective it is and track that change over time. Or alternatively, you can change how you count something and when you count, which is a little bit nefarious when it comes to crime data, uh, you know, but we'll use this example for now, right? So what, what did the Dallas PD uh, end up doing, right? So they really wanted UCR crimes to go down. So something that they became focused on was trying to reduce burglary rates, right? Burglary is, you know, one of those crimes that people end up committing. They scope out a place for a long time. Maybe they have motivations. They have to think about whether or not they can sell goods and whatnot. So uh, we have, like, burglary uh, coming in and something like that. Um, what you could do, right, is a couple of things, right? One, if you want those numbers to go down, um, you could stop counting them, right? But you really can't do that from a legal standpoint, right? You really, you know, kind of have to count and report those crimes, right? You could also make it uh, more difficult to uh, report, right? So UCR crimes are crimes that are known to police. So if uh, police aren't aware of a crime, right? Um, then they, you really can't count it, right? So if you make it so that police departments, that in order to file, to report a burglary, you have to physically go to a police station and report your call, then that number's gonna go down because a lot of people may not necessarily wanna make the trip down. Uh, they don't wanna like go in and file a paper report if you can't do it online or something like that. You know, you're really creating a hassle for someone. So if you make it a little bit more difficult to file the report, then your number's going to go down, right? And so, you know, regardless of how you feel about it, right? Um, hey, I got the numbers to go down, right? Maybe that's all that matters. The other thing that some people could do is to reclassify certain crimes. So instead of coming in and saying like, okay, well, this is an example. You go in, you see that maybe people have been on the property. May, stuff may or may not have been stolen. Rather than flag that as a burglary, maybe it's just criminal trespass, right? And criminal trespass, even though you know someone like entered the property, something like that, is not a UCR crime. Burglary is, but trespass is not. So if we decide uh, that we, you know, are just going to label this as criminal trespass, well, you know what? Um, we managed to make that number go down because we counted it differently. All of these are examples of how an instrument change or maybe there is a new policy that is put into place that changes how something is counted could affect an outcome, right? Especially if you had it directed towards a certain type of crime. So point being is that, um, you know, changes in policy or practice or direction um, can dramatically, can affect findings is what the uh, bottom line from this is, right? So um, just be aware of those uh, kinds of issues, right? Okay, so we'll pause this one. We'll pick up in the next.